Vera Polycarpou, de parti Akel de Chypre. Vera, s'il te plaît. Thank you. Uh, indeed, coming from uh, an area of the Eastern Mediterranean and uh, at the mouth of the Middle East, what is not called Middle East by the peoples of that area, um, I, I would like to try and, and speak about the responsibilities of the EU uh, concerning uh, the destruction of that area, because we all know about the responsibilities of the US, uh, not only today, but uh, a long time ago. <clears throat> but we should speak more, and uh, indeed uh, Walter spoke at the beginning about this. But I would like to go a bit deeper. Uh, the Lisbon Treaty in, uh, in 2009, when it was put into uh, force, it uh, included a very important part on security. And one of, the, of these bits, <laughs> what is called the Permanent Structure Cooperation, is currently put fully into implementation. Unfortunately, the current government of Cyprus has included Cyprus into this Permanent Structure Cooperation, and that's where one of our responsibilities as AKEL and as the uh, peace movement and the movement in Cyprus of both Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots stands. We have to oppose that because Cyprus should be uh, and should remain a bridge of cooperation, a bridge of friendship between the peoples of the region. We are between three continents and we should help the rest of the peoples of the EU to understand that and come closer to all that region in a peaceful way and not with arms. <clears throat> so this permanent structure cooperation in, is demanding, among other things, a full uh, commitment of the country that decides to go in. So it's at will, but once you have got in, you are for good. And that demands also 2% of the GDP of that country to be um, given to uh, security and defense. Of course, Cyprus being occupied 37% of it for 43 years by Turkey uh, is spending on defense, but what kind of defense? It's quite self-defense rather than defense, but still a lot of money goes on that. That's why we're working for a solution of the Cyprus problem, which we as Hakel see as a good contribution to the struggle for peace, to the struggle of uh, taking away the military bases, of stopping this kind of policies of uh, the EU and NATO, which unfortunately uh, Europe has decided to be completely uh, in alignment with, uh, with NATO, which makes it even worse. In the, just a couple of days ago there was one of the meetings at the defense level in the EU with the participation of course of uh, a NATO secretary, which is a normal thing nowadays unfortunately again. And uh, NATO has uh, uh, announced the creation of more um, commands at the level of, the, of Europe in order to defend Europe. I think that the peoples of Europe know what this kind of defense would mean. Another bit of this uh, Lisbon Treaty and of what came after it was uh, what we heard from Juncker, the creation of, uh, that, that was the approval or the, the constatation of what we already knew, the construction of the European army. Uh, and this is being done bit by bit and at the backs of the peoples. The people are plunged into the crisis, into the economic crisis, into the austerity policies. They are, they are, all their rights in the social sphere, in all kinds of benefits are taken away. Uh, education is not accessible, health is not accessible, but yes, there is money for this defense. But has Europe become more secure under this whole uh, picture of more and more defense, more and more actually attack and aggression? We see that what is happening, what used to happen far away from Europe, is unfortunately happening in the inside the streets of Europe. Um, and we can only be sorry for that because in all cases is people 
that are innocent and have nothing to do with these wars that are being killed. There's another point that is escaping most of, the, of our attention, is the bringing together of internal and external security at the level of the European Union. This is actually uh, what would mean that, let's say, uh, troops from uh, France could go to Spain in order to fight the demonstrators at the, uh, on the streets of Madrid or of Barcelona. This is internal security and the mingling of external and internal security. Military forces of another country supposedly helping you to uh, contradict or to stop uh, movements in your own country. We wouldn't like to see that, we, but this is already in the making. And there is a scary, very scary parallelism that again, again starts from uh, the Lisbon Treaty and from what all the militarization that we see and was spoken about again is the armament. But I would like to <clears throat> bring uh, to you from the European Parliament when this was debated, that is the formation of the military industrial uh, base for the European defense, one of the arguments was, well, we are in crisis, we need jobs. What do you want, to throw people in the streets? And I say that's a scary parallelism. A few days ago, I think a couple of days ago, was the um, anniversary of 1938 with Crystal Night. And what was talked about then? Again, defense and work. And where did we end up? We end up in a Holocaust. And I don't think that we want any of us to see another Holocaust. But we see Holocaust happening at the borders of Europe, in the seas of Europe, in another way. How do we react? We should remember our history and we should be very, very uh, alert on what can happen around that. Just a few days ago was the 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration that ended up in the division of Palestine and we have 50 years of, uh, of occupation of Palestine, how do we react to all that? I think that um, we are responsible, those that are on the European side, living in Europe, we have to stand up against all that. And one of the reasons why we have to stand up is that none of us, none of us in this room want to live, want our children or ourselves to live in a new world, because that's where we are ending up, and it was said here, I think by Walter, that we are approaching another war, where in the Middle East we have that war. It has destroyed countries, and uh, unfortunately Yemen has been killed, uh, and uh, not many people talk about it until there was a, uh, a missile that fell into very close to Riyadh, and uh, the, the, the scary thing is that um, these people don't have human rights. The human rights are only for certain peoples, for uh, some uh, countries. Some people are more, uh, are more uh, important than others in the eyes of the EU, and the EU doesn't use the force that it has to bring an end, let's say, on the issue of Palestine to apply what is in its laws, the association agreement, Article 2, stop the, the trade relations with Israel in order to bring about human rights for the Palestinians and for the Israelis themselves, because democracy there is also threatened us in the same way that is threatened in Europe, because if you don't respect the democracy of others, your democracy is being threatened. And I believe that the role of all of us is to stop these policies, to bring about our unity in what we agree. There are many things that we don't agree upon, but I think on this issue we can agree. And we have to build a very strong campaign against uh, militarization and for peace. We have that obligation and we have that strength. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.